Now, uh, the president says uh, that he's going to send in military to stop the protests. Um, thoughts on that? You know, Ellen, I, I have to give thought to him because he is the president, but I just, I, I, I wish in an ideal world I didn't because for every single second that I give energy to him is wasted energy. This president is a lost cause. And that's why it, again, will take people of good conscience to stand up and say enough is enough. And in the same way that he allowed Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks to give credibility to the information we were receiving on COVID-19, I just wish that he would do that to this conversation. He has an inability to empathize with anything. And this situation is no different. So when you're talking about bringing in military forces, I, I, I said this yesterday and I'll say it again, it's America's a tinderbox right now and his tongue is a match. And every time he speaks, he throws another match on this tinderbox and he's making it worse. And so I just, I, it, it's truly my hope that somebody of good conscience, whether it's from the Senate or, or someone else of, of stature, will stand in the gap and speak the things that America needs to hear right now. Um, because this is not a partisan issue. I, I've worked with, I've been working with Governor Kemp since Friday on, on how we are coordinating and addressing the protest in Atlanta. It's not a partisan issue. This is a people issue. And he, I just wish that he would stop. It, it, it's not incumbent on you to be doing this, but you should know that you are stepping into that gap. By being on our show, by speaking out, you are stepping into that vacuum. And I think you should be aware how important and how healing and, and, and your, your words have been and, for all of us. And how necessary. I mean, obviously, we're talking about a lack of leadership. But, you know, it's 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 frightening to me. And it is not a partisan thing. E even the, you know, these peaceful protesters who were in Washington and they, they throw tear gas and so he can go get a photo op with a Bible in his hand. N no one is saying or telling him to stop. And the reality is this, when there's this much anger in this country, it's all of our problem. We're talking about the trauma and, and the post-traumatic stress that young men of color are feeling in this country. It, it explodes and, and you can't put your head in the sand and, and act like it's not an issue for all of us because we're watching in real time this explosion on our streets across America. And so it behooves all of us to care about this because it's impacting all of us and it will continue to impact us in the same way that the civil rights movement was just that it was a movement. It was a long movement and it went on for years and years and years. If we're going to have a true movement for change in this country, we at least want it to be a peaceful, purposeful movement. But for us to stay in this state of chaos with a president who is continuing uh, to do harm to us as a country is simply not sustainable. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's not gonna go anywhere but, but bad. Um, where, I guess in conclusion, um, where do we go from here? What do you think is the next step? I think the next step is for us to succinctly articulate what it is that we want. We, we know what our pain is, we know what our hurt is, but now we've got to articulate what the point of satisfaction is. And that's the work that I look forward to leading uh, with the people um, on the ground in Atlanta and with our activists and being able to succinctly say, this is what we need to see happen in America. We know that in the same way um, the Obama-Biden administration left a pandemic handbook, next to that handbook was one on policing in the 21st century. And it created a very clear framework on how you create trust and you build trust in communities by not having the first interaction with police officers and young people be when somebody is chasing someone down the street. 
we have something, we have a foundation to build upon. I think it's just incumbent upon all of us to now finish the work. Well, I will be that platform for you and for anybody else who wants to come in and tell us what, what, what you need, what you want, what we can do to help make change. And, and um, I, I think just like Ellen said, sorry to interrupt Ellen, but you know, this isn't a moment in time. This has to be ongoing for us. And Ellen and I, as two privileged white people, have to make that commitment. And part of that commitment as our season is ending, is that next year you be a part of our voice and you help us and we help you to get the message out that needs to be gotten out. Thank you. Anytime, anytime you wanna uh, talk to us. Thank you so much and um, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be back.